Hey everybody, uh, Cliff Ford here, and today in this video, I'm going to be finally doing my One Piece chapter review on chapter 1055, so uh, thank you for joining me today. Now, uh, funny thing is, is that I kind of already recorded my video uh, just a little while ago, but I'm re- uh, well, I'm re-recording it again because I don't know what happened, but for some reason my recording I messed up and I didn't realize it, so um, I have to like completely record this entire thing again. Uh, Alright, so let's just uh, get into it, shall we? So the first thing we uh, sort of get is we get to the flower capital and stuff like that, and we're still uh, going around the festival. And the first thing we have is we have Na uh, Nami, Tama, and Zeus uh, having the time of their lives and celebrating and stuff like that. So uh, nothing much else to go for there. Um, now the first thing we actually get when we come back to the whole uh, Green Bull and Yamato and Momo situation is that you know uh, Yamato is basically trying to offer her assistance to uh, Momo and help out as much as possible, but Momo is basically uh, refusing to let uh, Yamato interfere. He's basically telling her, "Do not interfere here," and uh, we'll sort of get into like a, a good explanation and uh, reason why. So um so yeah so and then uh, Green Bull manages to take Momo and basically just slams him to the ground. Now, uh, what comes next is that Raizo basically uses a fire uh, jutsu uh, ability attack from his scroll jutsu crew and basically lets out a fire attack attack Green Bull. Unfortunately, this doesn't really work uh, because, like, th since this is such an obvious uh, weakness to uh, Green Bull and the fact that he's a Navy Admiral, um, that that attack is basically like uh, child's play. Uh, it's like, you know, it's mere, it's a mere laugh thing at this moment. It probably would have done damage if it was hockey infused, but this was just like regular fire, and Green Bull has obviously worked with his Del Fruit, so he's obviously uh, gotten to the point where a mere fire, or a mere regular fire, isn't, is like, is like literally shit to him. It's like meaningless. And then um, not long after that, uh, Green Bull lets an attack and basically starts sucking out Raizo's nutrients. Um, here we have uh, Kawamatsu and all the other scabbers uh, jumping in to try and save Raizo. Oh, um, they're basically uh, trying to chop off and to slice up his uh, roots. Unfortunately, they just keep growing back and then suddenly they all end up being captured. Now, um, that is it for that portion of the chapter and stuff like that, and then uh, what we come to next is we come to Robin and Law, and they sort of like, we're, we're sort of going to get some history lore for this moment. So here we have that fact that Law basically found out where Robin is, and that he's um, sort of going with uh, Robin and Sugiyaki uh, further down uh, the chamber, the secret chambers of verse, uh, to locate the rogue pony of um, so here we basically find out that uh, Sugiyaki basically mentions that he had never told uh, Kaido Orochi about this route, but unfortunately because Jack, the lead performer, was a fishman, they discovered the rope polygraph. So yeah, so uh, because uh, Jack is a fishman, uh, he was able to just swim to the bottom of the ocean and locate the, um, basically locate the um, uh, rope polygraph uh, like that. So and um, law, not law, but Robin basically asked like, why would a fishman, why would it being a fishman make easy a spot? Um, and then here, like, um, what comes basically next is that uh, Robin basically notices a strange light coming from over the side and stuff like that. And there's like a crawl space, so um, and there's a glass barrier sort of like blocking it, it, and there's like water on the other side. And then you know, Sukiyaki basically mentions to them, uh, you, you know, you can go and take a look for yourself if you want. And then so what, the most uh, outstanding and shocking thing that basically both of them open their eyes at a complete uh, at a complete shock of what they're seeing and then as they look as they basically look through the glass they basically see Wano oh, underwater um, basically Wano at the bottom of the sea and then here we find out that that is actually Wano 800 years ago oh, a different Wano so basically the current Wano that we are at right now is not the Wano that existed 800 years ago no the Wano existed 800 years ago is at the very bottom of, of the um uh, is at the very bottom, it's like that. So here's basically a diagram. I sort of drew my own diagram to sort of explain how it is. My, my picture isn't perfect. All right, so right here is 108 800 years ago, right? So that's 108 800 years ago. And then right at the very top right here is current Wano, okay? This is Mount Fuji, and basically as it is, uh, basically like uh, giant wall structures um, sort of like surrounded Wano. Oh, unfortunately, um, over the years, rainwater suddenly began filling up, causing like the because the rainwater had nowhere else to go. It basically, kept filling up like a giant bowl, bowl. And then what had happened over the years, uh, the citizens of Wano had to like keep uh, building, uh, keep going up higher and higher on the mountains and stuff like that. And they managed to basically rebuild new lands on top of Wano itself. Um, 
and basically right below it is like Owana. Oh, and because like the rainwater it basically filled up so high, it basically causes like uh, floods over the sides to basically you know uh, waterfalls to flood over the sides. Now the interesting thing about this is that you're probably wondering like, well, when the waterfalls eventually stop, so why are they still going? The most likely reason because of this is because keep in mind that Wano has a lot of insane weather around, around and it's um, causing like uh, climate changes so uh, insanely. So no matter what, because of these like uh, climate changes and these uh, sudden uh, storms, the water is like literally um, constantly uh, rotating and moving. In. So it's basically like, it's basically always, um, it's hard to explain, but it's basically, it's an, an, it's an endless waterfall at this point. So, um, so yes, and then uh, after after they see that, uh, Sukiyaki sort of explains and sort of uh, goes in details on like what he knows. He doesn't actually know specifically like the um, like the uh, like the entire details necessarily. He only knows like what's been passed down through um, uh, through his family and sort of explain uh, what's going on. And then um, not long after that, at um, uh, Robin uh, basically finds the rope on cliff. And then here we discover that they finally found their third one, and now all they need is just one more. Or so yes, just one more road pongo F left. And uh, and here we basically find out that the uh, the ancient weapon Pluton is set to rest. Uh, now um, Kozuki basically mentions that he's never actually seen Pluton on, so he has no idea. Like he knows like it's beneath uh, even further down. Like he knows that. But he has never actually seen it, nor does he actually know how to uh, get there specifically. So if there's like a secret entrance or something like that, he is not sure where it is or like even how to uh, get there. All he knows is that it's basically even further down below. Oh, that's all he knows. Now, uh, Kozuki basically uh, points out and states that in order to retrieve Pluton, the walls will need to be torn down. In other words, opening the border means destroying the country's natural defense and unleashing an ancient weapon onto the world. Roll. Opening uh, here, uh, you know, uh, Robin sort of asks us like that, like, wh why would Odin want to do such th things like that? Now, Kozuki basically mentions and points out is that, um, you know, he was like, he's not actually aware of like what Odin learned on his journey, so he doesn't actually understand and or know why. He never actually got a chance to ask him specifically. Um, so yeah, so it's really it's sort of like up in the air, and I imagine that we're not going to get into this until the Straw Hats leech Live Tell, and we sort of learn specifically like what exactly was learned and like why it could be such a big deal. So, uh, so yeah, so that is it for the whole uh, Lava and Raw situation and what they uh, sort of learned. Big mystery shocker right there. All right, so we basically cut back to the whole Green Bull and uh, uh, Momo situation that's going on uh, near the fire capital. Uh, we basically have uh, sort of a Green Bull going off rant, sort of explaining, hey. Since you guys take down Kaya, oh, I wouldn't have to be coming here if you didn't take down Kaya. So, yeah, so he's basically pointing out, out that, hey, if you would have just, just let Kaya alone and let him torture you guys like you guys should have, I wouldn't have to be coming here. And so he's basically sort of demanding uh, that they bring him Stry Luffy right now. Al. And he's also offering, hey, you bring me Stry Luffy, I'll go, all right? I don't care about you guys. You guys are nothing to me. Just bring me Stry Hat Luffy. And in here, we basically have uh, Yamato uh, sort of step up and uh, state that, um, sort of tell Mo, why not just ask Luffy for help? Let's just let Luffy and the guys uh, take care of this. They can beat this guy. And then, uh, you know, keep in mind, Momo knows full well that Luffy can handle this, all right? He knows full well. But this goes much deeper than that, at, and this is like, this sort of gives like, an, this sort of gives uh, more faith for the people out there who want Yamato to join to sort of understand this. So Momo is basically telling uh, Yamato that this is not an option. It's like that. That he won't uh, keep asking for help for anyone, um, especially Yamato and uh, Luffy in this case. Now, Momo basically points out to Yamato, like, you've been trapped on 108 for nearly uh, all your li life, and now you're finally getting a chance to be free. Um, and I don't want that to be taken away, or even... And stuff. So basically, what he's sort of like describing here is that you know Momo has always relied on the help of others to fight his battles, and especially for like all Wano. And now, um, basically, what Momo is stating here is very emotional, and it's something that you gotta understand is that he's basically stating that if we cannot defend for ourselves, if we cannot prove that we can handle outside enemies uh, like this, then. Well, basically, what he's saying is that he's sort of like worried. He wants uh, he wants Yamato to join the Tri Crew. He wants Yamato to go out there on that journey that uh, she wants to go out there and do. And basically, what he's stating is that um, if he cannot prove that he can handle these things on his own, then he's afraid that Yamato will basically stay behind and try and protect Wano. When unfortunately, he knows full well that Yamato has every right to do what she wants to do, and he makes he wants to make sure that Yamato has that privilege. So, um, so yeah, so that sort of explains that. And then, um, as uh, sort of as Momo uh, tries harder and harder to do the bullet breath, 
suddenly, amazingly, he finally accomplishes it. He finally accomplishes a bolo breath and lets out an insane attack and blasts that green bull all. And then, I mean, green bull is completely eradicated in this blast, but unfortunately, like a little like a uh, twig uh, is left behind. A little green twig is left behind, and green bull basically starts uh, growing back. So yes, he starts growing back. Now, um, unfortunately. What comes next is that uh, Conqueror's Hockey uh, starts uh, flying out of nowhere, and uh, Green Bull basically feels the effects of this attack, and it starts freaking out. But he also comes aware that this is obviously the Conqueror's Hockey of the Red Hair Pirates. So, and here um, we're basically uh, giving a monologue from Shanks, uh, sort of stating a war uh, sort of uh, stating a warning Green Bull, oh, um, sort of like sort of like war uh, warning him specifically. Um, are you afraid of the new era or something like that? So he's basically uh, stating that, you know, these guys have just uh, changed the world and they're basically trying to rest and recuperate. And here you come in and messing up their fun. Who are you to stand in the wet way? And we basically have Green Bull uh, sort of stating that uh, he's not ready to pick a fight with uh, Shanks and his crew, not just yet. So, um, so yeah, so that is it for that. So, yeah, so that is it for that part. Now, as we move on, all right, so as we move on to the final part, art, uh, here we have the rest of the Strats and everyone else uh, sort of partying and celebrating, having a good time at the fire capital, enjoying the festival. And for the final thing, we have uh, Sanji, uh, Luffy, Zoro, and Jinbei all sitting over and basically uh, watching uh, what had uh, watching the events that fold down between uh, Momo and Green Bull taking care of the situation. So they were aware that Green Bull was there the entire time. They were already aware of it. Um, so yeah, so and uh, Jinbei points out that he notices the strange uh, hockey that uh, overflew and stuff like that. And then, uh, you know, Luffy's got sort of a smile on his face, and then, um, like, uh, it's not actually revealed or stated worthy if any of them knows who it was, but we also get a moment where Luffy basically uh, sort of smiles his, um, as a familiar face popped on his head. And then um, Shanks, all we get left on the final panel is Shanks' ship uh, sailing off as he goes to take care of the Bartow situation. So, um, so yeah, so that is it for the chapter review. Um, hey, I really enjoyed this chapter a lot. I had a great, I had fun with it. I thought this was amazing. The uh, depth to it, the lore, the um, the paneling, the um, the emotionary uh, statements between uh, Momo, basically pointing out to Yamato the reason why um, we cannot allow you guys to fight for us. It's a very emotional thing. So, and hey, I hope this, like, further gives evidence for people to see that uh, Yamato is uh, worthy to join the Strat crew. Also, just to point out, I also want Kira to join the crew as well, which which a lot of people do. So, hey, um, I'm still on this train until the end of Wano, until the Strats leave. So, hey, I had a great time with this chapter. It was really fun, and I hope you all enjoyed it as well. Um, hey, if you did enjoy my review and my breakdown of what I offered and what I said, please let me know by uh, smashing that like button, all right? Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell, all right? Doing all these things not only helps uh, you, but helps me, all right? We're basically helping each other out, right? We're basically trying to scratch each other's backs. That's how it sort of works. So, um, so yeah, so that is it. You all have a great day. Bye now.